Thank you for tuning into the Buyer's Guide podcast, where we talk all things property and finance. My name is Peter Mastriani. I'm the founder of the Buyer's Guide, which has been established to really help as many people as possible buy their first home right through to building a property portfolio, securing their financial future. In today's cast, we're going to discuss why properties aren't listed at a specific price. So let's get to it. When you commence your search, you quickly realize that getting a clear cut price will be next to impossible. Instead, you'll encounter price ranges or offers above or bidding from. It's definitely frustrating, um, but you know, it's something that has to be overcome, particularly if you just want to find out what the actual price is. Price ranges or guidelines uh, have been used by agents for a considerable period of time now, and they are used so agents can create some sense of urgency or scarcity. It's a tactic to play on the emotions and help to influence the price. Having a lot of people at an open house who are expressing interest increases that sense of competition as well. Not having a set price plays on all of those factors, and the guideline is merely a guideline. The agent is likely to know the market, but the vendor usually has a heightened sense of what the property is actually worth because of their own emotional attachment. These factors do make it difficult to pin down a specific price. Now, it can definitely be argued that these kind of statements are misleading or that they're false advertising, but look, it's standard practice. No one wants to show their full hand. The only way to know a price is to have really done your research. Get to know your market. Go to auctions. Visit open houses. Know your competition. It's pretty weird. You end up seeing the same people each Saturday. Um, Look, the, the more you know the market with similar house price sales, it'll place you in a position of strength when offering to buy or negotiating a sales contract. Some believe it takes over 100 open houses in terms of your attendance to actually have a true appreciation of what is a a fair market value for a property. Another method though, although not foolproof, is to use the guideline property, uh, guideline prices on property search engines. Now, no matter the listing, the agent will be required to submit a price in order for the property to become searchable within the listings. For example, you can get a guesstimate by looking within the price range, which is, say, hypothetically, 450000 to 500000 within a specified location. You find a property that you like, and then you reset the price range to 450 to 475 Does the property still come up in the search? If so, keep tweaking to see what results you can get. It's not 100% accurate, but like I said, it can give you a reasonable indication of what the price has been set at. The property market over time fluctuates like the weather. Sometimes it's boiling hot, other times it can be freezing, and most of the time it's somewhere in between. Now, no matter the weather forecast at the time, it will either favour the buyers or the sellers. Now, signals that may indicate that it's a buyer's market include long periods of being for sale, lower house prices, um, properties that are are listed with multiple agents or or the agents themselves being particularly responsive and and regularly calling for feedback and updates. Um, The the volume of of property or or stock would certainly increase. And there's lower number of visitors at, at open houses. And the opposite of these factors tends to take place when it's a seller's market in terms that there's higher prices and property transactions, you know, turn over quickly and and there's a general sense of hype. But look, in both scenarios, agents will use a pricing strategy in order to achieve the best price for their vendor. Differences in a buyer's market is that you have the opportunity to apply more pressure and steer the pricing outcome to your favour. Overcoming price uncertainty 
you know, it can be done by truly knowing your finances. Having pre-approval as well will, will definitely help as it will allow you to uh, be more focused of what you can afford because you can back it up with a, a solid budget and have a pricing guideline in terms of the properties that you're looking and searching for. Very importantly, you have to do your research. Knowing what comparable properties have achieved you know, is an absolute necessity. You need to educate yourself with what has been going on and make an informed decision. And if it's not right for you, you know, you can just keep on walking. There are plenty of other houses out there. You just need to have a little patience at time. An educated decision on a fair value for a property can be formulated by looking at the recent sale prices, um, by looking at the, the market trends or comparisons to new listings in, in the local market and also days on the market and whether the sales have been above or below trend. Looking at these four factors and, and inspecting as many properties as possible within your preferred location and preferred budget should give you a strong appreciation of its current market value. If you have doubt, maybe consider getting an independent evaluation. Um, you know, your solicitor can ad advise you on making this a contractual clause in terms of the sale of the property being subject to valuation, which, you know, could really be a great negotiation tool. The true price of a property is what someone is actually prepared to pay for it at that point in time. Uncertainty is always likely to be a factor. The best outcome is to be happy with the end result you achieve. So happy hunting. And be sure to keep an eye out for our regular webinars, one of which is that we show you in detail how to do property research quickly, effectively, using free online resources. So stay tuned, good luck, and look forward to you tuning in to our next podcast where we continue to talk all things property and finance. Bye-bye.